President Joe Biden, he continues to call for unity. The nation needs to be united. Let's all come together. Let's all just get along. You know, now that that device of Donald Trump is out of here, you know, and I'm here, let's just, let's bring back, you know, love and everybody love everybody. Um, but it feels disingenuous. It, it doesn't feel like a true unity or what the Bible would define as unity. So I guess the question is, what do you see as some of the distinctions between Biden's unity and God's unity? Uh, well, you know, that's a, <laughs> that's a good question. I, I, you know, I, I, God's unity, I, I don't know. I, I do think that the New Testament, one of the key themes of the New Testament is unity within the church. And I, I think that there's, um, you know, I think a lot of the talk about unity in the New Testament is specific to the church community, that there's this new kind of community that has been inaugurated. And the way that we live within that community is to be different than mm -hmm. the way the way that people have, have lived, I I think, in the world. We see Ephesians. It's right, you know, it's like three chapters right. of, of the gospel, three chapters of how we're supposed to live mm -hmm. in response to that as a community, as as a church. I also think this idea, you know, there is this idea that like Christ is reconciling all things to himself, mm -hmm. which I can't begin to explain. You know, Biden's unity is basically, you know, surrender to me, <laughs> you know, right. in my, in my right. way, go, go along with me. And I do think, and this is where I think, um, you know, I do think as Christians, we need to be careful because, you know, I have a very, I think the Bible takes a very high view of authority and, yep. mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, we are called to be into, you know, submission to the authorities, even, you know, you look at like first Peter, it's like, even when they are evil authorities right? in, in many respects. And so, um, you know, I don't think, you know, again, it's, you know, it's a little, you know, it's not like, you know, okay, we have to go along with Biden because he's the president, you know, the Pharisees were the authorities. Jesus didn't go along. He recognized their authority. He said they live at, they sit in Moses' seat, but he didn't mm -hmm. act like they were like these great group of people either. So I think we can, right. we can respect, I do think we have to respect and honor authorities yes. uh, in right. a country. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to, to support, um, support what, you know, they're doing or all those things. Right. And you know, additionally, within our, within our culture and our system of government, dissent and protests and things like that are certainly valid parts of what it means to be mm -hmm. under the authority of the United States. So there's, That's right. there's an explicit legalized room for dissent. But I, you know, I do think this, you know, I, I do think we need to be careful, uh, you know, not to o overly reject, you know, overly reject the, you know, the authorities that are there just because we don't like them. So the reality right. is Joe Biden is the president. That's right. Yeah. And so we need to, you know, we need to, you know, honor, honor the king, right? In, in the sense that we're right. called to pay, give taxes to who taxes are due, et cetera. But, you know, I certainly think, you know, Joe Biden, you know, just like all politicians, this call for unity is basically do what I want. And, right. uh, you know, I don't think right. that we have and to go along so, with that. Yeah. So let me pick up on that. You said, do what I want, you know, and earlier you said, uh, you know, Biden's unity is surrender to me. Surrender yeah, to basically. me. And I, and I thought, and I think that's great because, so this is, this is kind of, you know, as you were saying that, it just got me thinking, but I think Biden's unity is, in many ways, ironically, I think it is similar to God's unity um, or Christ's unity, because that's Christ's unity, surrender to me. Yeah. Right? And I think, you, you know, like you said, like the, you know, the unity in the church, um, I kept thinking as you were talking, I kept thinking, like, the reason that we should, and we don't always have it because we're sinners and we fail, but, but the reason why there's at least the hope or the opportunity, the potential of unity within the church is because as Christians and followers of Jesus, we are all supposed to be surrendered to Christ and what he thinks, his virtues, his values, his priorities, his commandments. And, and so the reason we even stand a chance at unity, it seems, is because our commander in chief within the church, Jesus Christ, the head of the church, um, the, the way that he tries to gain unity, or the way that he is gaining, he doesn't just try, but he is gaining unity in his body, his bride, is, um, is by forming more and more by his grace through sanctification, by the power of the spirit, he is forming more and more of himself, his virtues, his values, his righteousness within his body from the head is flowing all the blessings of God to the body of Christ. And we're becoming more like him. And we're, we're we are, increasingly uh, sharing in his virtues, his values, his thoughts, um, thinking God's thoughts after him, you know, and, and I think like Biden wants that unity. It's funny, because I, I just, I haven't thought it, uh, like this before, but just as you were talking, I was thinking, 
I think Biden's calling for the, that same type of unity. Think the way I think, um, have the same virtues as I have. I think the problem is, um, from a Christian perspective, I just don't know if we're supposed to have unity. In, in a nation with, with, with filled with Christians, but also pagans, I, I keep thinking of scripturally, like there is no fellowship. What fellowship does light have with darkness? What, like, so as Christians, I think we can, we can have like a unity. I've heard some, some people say two types of biblical unity. One is a, a unity of common care, and one is a unity of common conviction, right? So there's that unity of common conviction that, that we have the same doctrine, the same tenets, the same, you know, that Ephesians 4 talks about that we, uh, that the unity of the faith. But then there's also the unity of love, the unity of common care that, you know, that even those people who are less mature and have some wrong views that we bear with those um, who are weaker in the faith and who get under our skin and mistreat us. We're bearing with them. We're long suffering. We're patient. We're loving. And so I think when it comes to the nation, it seems like we can we can aspire to have what you're saying, you know, honor the emperor, honor the king. We can aspire to have that unity of common care. But biblically, we can never have that unity of common conviction. We're never going to agree with abortion. We're never going to agree with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, well, I would hope that Christians would never agree with socialism. Uh, that's my perspective. You know, I, I would, you know, because we would see these as things that are against the Ten Commandments. It's murder and it's theft. And just because it's civil theft doesn't mean it's not theft. And so uh, these kind of things, we, we cannot have unity of common conviction, unity of thought, uh, but, but we can still strive to have a unity of common care, a unity of love, um, bearing with one another, being patient, long-suffering, those kinds of things. Would you agree with, with that? Yeah, well, I think if you look at the Bible, right, unity in the church is possible because of two things. One, uh, in theory, everyone in the church has placed their highest allegiance to Christ. So everybody has the same right. uh, the same thing. And secondly, there's the power of the Holy Spirit <laughs> that's at work right. uh, to make right. it possible. And even then, even just in the New Testament, these apostolic planted churches, you know, by people who are, you know, better ministers than you or I will ever be, right. it was a constant struggle. Unity, I mean, a lot of those they letters were written, they still couldn't get it to work. Right. And uh -huh. so I think when you start looking at the the difficulties of unity within the church, and, you know, uh, I think it's almost impossible kind of outside of it. Again, in Biden's unity, I, I don't think there's anything particularly nefarious to it. That's what all politicians will say. That's what Trump said yep. when he got elected. Yep. And, right. you know, Biden, and his guys, they didn't, they didn't unify around Trump. Yeah. You know, they yep, declared right. themselves the resistance. That's and right. so, yep. uh, you know, it's what every president's going to do. I don't, you know, I don't put too much, uh, you know, I don't put too much stock in, in that sort of pull those kind of political yep. statements. And you're right. We're not going to have, you know, you're not going to have um, unity. And I think that actually, yep. you know, shows that the more, you know, that, that is, uh, you know, this common convictions and, and sort of things. When you have a more diverse society, unity becomes progressively more difficult to achieve. That's right. And yeah, so, because there's less uh, to unite around. Yeah, they have le you just, have less kind yeah. of, you know, you know, less common cause. Uh, but and I use, I use the term diversity in kind of the broadest sense, and that it's just, mm -hmm. you know, people of all sorts of different inclinations, ideas, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. it's just going to be very hard to create create unity around those things. Right. You have different religions, you have different <clears throat> cultures, you right. have different, you know, ethnicities, all, all these things in America. And it, the sad thing, the ironic thing is, um, you know, with all those differences, there's there's not a whole lot for us to unite around in terms of commonality. The one thing that we had that we could unite around was love for the country. And now that one got taken away, too. So it's like, what, right. what do you, you know, what, what do I have to unite over with, you know, at my Nigerian neighbor? you know, who is American, they live in America, they're an American citizen, but like, culturally, we don't have a whole lot. But but typically, what we would have is they're here for a reason. And, and nine times out of 10, the reason is because, in some sense, they love America, they, they view this is a wonderful place to be. That's why I moved my family here. And I could say, hey, I love America, too. But now, you, you can't even say that anymore. So it's, there's just not a lot of not a lot of items left to unite around. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, uh, we hope that you'll take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can watch more content like this. Also, take a moment and give this video a like so that it can reach more people. And take a moment and click on the bell so that you'll be notified whenever we come out with new content. Thanks so much. God bless.